later stage, as the system evolved to a later time at the lower temperatures, it cannot stay as a fluid uh, for its all, uh, whole lifetime because in, eventually what we absorb in the detector is actually individual particles, not fluid cells. So, so as the density become really low, the system become, well, kind of falling apart from each other. So, so, so we we'll, need to actually convert the individual fluid cell into particles. And this is actually um, so-called the Cooper Fry uh, particleization procedures. Um, then we need to develop basically uh, a criteria first to see when and where uh, the hydrodynamics is actually uh, become invalid and we need to actually switch from a fluid cell description into particle descriptions and then further propagate those particles through scatterings in the hydraulic phase. So one estimation you can try to do is basically looking at uh, kinetic equilibrium. Uh, so the hydrodynamics requires local thermal equilibrium for the fluid cell to be valid, uh, for the its this description to be valid. So you can you can try to sorry you can try to um, uh, estimate the equilibrium requirements for kinetic uh, equilibrium requirements to be saying that the underlying scattering scattering rates uh, between particles needs to be much larger than the system expansion rate. So when they are equi equal, roughly equal to each other, that, that's when the system will go out of uh, kinetic equilibrium. Or you will say this go to kinetic freeze out. So, so the scattering rate is basically can, you can consider as the inverse of the scattering time, which is proportional to the cross section times particle number densities. And if you estimate density to be about temperature to the cube, you will actually get about sigma times T cube as the, as the, as the scattering rate. And the expansion rate is actually basically the expansion rate of the gradient fluid cells in the local fluid cells. So when we, when we expect the fluid description to be, um, start to break uh, from its descriptions, we can, we can expect these criteria to be, uh, to be valid when this scattering rate is about the size of the expansion rate. So if you actually use these approximations, you will find that um, the breakout happens somewhat at a fixed temperature, which is uh, assumptions, which is saying that it will be some kind of, which the temperature is a proportional to the expansion rate over some uh, over your underlying cross section to the one, t or one third. So that gives you a criteria that you can pick up some temperature, a uh, freeze out temperature, which is close to these values, which helps you to determine when and where you want to convert your fluid cell into particles. But in the actual numerical case, we basically set the freeze out temperature as a free parameter in the simulations and tune to the experimental data. And these will be somewhere around 140, 150 uh, when we switch to, to the hydronic transport simulations. So, so when we want to, so once we determine the where and when we want to convert a fluid cell to the particles, we actually want to need to have a procedures to map individual particles into momentum space of the momentum of the particle. So this is so-called Cooper Fry particleizations, which is essentially these equations written in this slide. It's saying that if you look at the particles momentum distributions uh, from a fluid cell, it is basically uh, it's basically a thermal distributions that uh, that is that uh, coupled with the flux of how many particles will actually go flow out from this. Uh, uh, surface element, d sigma mu from the from that hypersurface of a constant temperatures, and the delta f here is indicated some viscous corrections, which is, should be smaller than the equilibrium part. So this is kind of the correction due to the shear presence of shear and bulk viscosity at the freeze out surface. So you need to take account of the viscous corrections to the to the equilibrium distribution functions. So the 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 physical idea to understand these equations is basic these equations for fields energy momentum uh, conservations when you convert a fluid cell into a, a sample of particles in the particle spectra. Once the particle is produced, you can feed them into hydronic cascade or hydronic transport code like URQMD or SMASH and then further propagate the particles as individual uh, particles through microscopic scatterings and decays in there. <coughs> 